You're listening to today's inspirational message on Holy Week with Bryce Vaught. Welcome to day three of our Holy Week devotions. And this morning, we're just going to transition from uh, Matthew into John's gospel, where John gives us some significant attention uh, towards the the final night of Jesus' life. Um, In fact, starting in John chapter 13, all the way through 18, John uh, shows us that Jesus knelt down to wash his disciples' feet. He of course, informed them about uh, Peter and, and Judas's coming betrayal, and uh, then he taught on the Holy Spirit. And then in John 15, he he shares that he's the true vine, and that anyone who abides in abides in him will be fruitful. And he makes this statement: He says, "If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you." Sounds similar to the passage we we read yesterday in Matthew. Uh, But Jesus, again, is teaching on prayer that right faith in him will lead to this fruitfulness that we desire that nothing else can produce. But then Jesus doesn't just teach on prayer. He also prays. And I want to focus most of our time on John chapter 17, which I'm not going to go back and, and read the whole thing. But this is often referred to as the high priestly prayer. And a priest in the Old Testament was really someone who stood in the in the gap, who stood in the place between God and man and mediated on their behalf. Moses was a great example of a priest. When the nation of Israel rebelled, Moses stood in their place and interceded for them on their behalf to turn God's anger away. And Jesus in Hebrews is presented as the great high priest. He's this priest king that we have a great hope in. But his prayer in John 17 really gives us a lot of insight into what a godly priest looks like uh, and, and how a godly priest prays for his people. And first, a, a godly priest prays in alignment with God's known will. Uh, even starting his prayer in John 17, Jesus says, Father, the hour has come glorify your son that the son may glorify you and just that statement the hour has come all throughout john jesus has has repeated the phrase my hour has not come my hour has not come and then we get here and he says the hour has come jesus knew exactly who he was what god had sent him to accomplish and he prays in alignment with that that he, he knows God's heart. And uh, then he prays with others in mind. It, it still amazes me that the night before his crucifixion, Jesus here, instead of praying for himself, his own needs, his own concerns, he prays for his disciples. He prays that they'd be protected in the world. He prays that they would be sanctified in truth. Uh, he prays that they would be sent out in, into the mission field the way Jesus was sent. And then he says he doesn't ask just for these, but also those who would believe through their word. And we can trust that Jesus here is also praying for us, those who've come to believe through the message and testimony of the gospel. And then a good priest also prays with eternity in view. Jesus recalls in this prayer of the time before the foundation of creation was laid about how he shared the glory of God with the Father. And he says, glorify me with the same glory that we shared and, and before creation. And I think this is important because we see that Jesus, because he's the high priest, The only thing that we see him doing upon his resurrection and ascension is that he prays at the right hand of the Father on behalf of those who love him and have believed in him. That because of Jesus' work in Holy Week, this priestly prayer he prays in John 17 is continued now. He prays for us today. It also says in, in Peter that we as believers are to be priests for one another, that 
as we look at the priestly example of Jesus and his prayers in John 17, we can pray for others in the same way. We can pray for people in alignment with what God desires. We can pray for others with love and selflessness, and we can pray with eternity in view because we have a hope that we have a future with God, and we can pray with confidence and boldness because of what Christ has done for us. And so, uh, again, I, I say thank you for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us here today. Dr. Kurt B. Orkland will return next week as he continues his study on the Proverbs. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.